Please welcome the sweetest man I know, David Spade. What's up, Hudson? Good crowd. Good crowd. Good crowd. They're happening. What's happening, brother? This is a uh, happening set. Oh, thank you, my son. They're pouring all that beef some money, butthead money, right back into this show. <laughs> so, um... Why do you hurt me like that? I'm not, I'm not. I'm the sweetest guy you know. Really? Remember? Hold me. It's a all good right, crowd. let me ask you this. David Spade? Yeah. You're getting huge. Yeah. Huge. Oh, yeah. You getting the big fan mail now? <laughs> uh, I get some fan mail. <laughs> Does anybody? I get, uh... Well, being famous, first of all, is like being stoned, you know? It's like you always think everyone's looking at you, but they're really not. <laughs> and, uh, I get weird fan mail, like, uh, out of my ten uh, letters a week, about, you know, five of them ask me to the prom. It's like, it's cute. It's like girls in high school that, like, don't have a date to the prom, and they ask me to go. And most of the time I can't because it's a show week, but the letters, <laughs> the letters are always nice. It's like, um, dear Hollywood Minute guy, um, well, you got the problem with me. Okay, I'll pay for your tux, and uh, we're gonna double in a limo with Kathy and her boyfriend. <laughs> and uh, it's gonna be a keg of low and brow. <laughs> and um, my old boyfriend will be there. He'll be so pissed. It'll be great. <laughs> so right back, true love always. <laughs> and then you it's like, P.S. And you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's cute. That's very cute. But because I remember in high school, I was like the worst date. Here's yeah. my impression of me on a date in high school. Come on, chug it. <laughs> Come on. That's all right. it was. No. But no, I uh, I remember that night. That was a fun uh, night. Um, <laughs> here's my here's oh. my impression of a a, um, a girl in high school uh, that I invited to a party at my house. Where is everybody? <laughs> <laughs> They just left. So, uh, but you got to be careful now. I just, uh, oh, yeah. just uh, finally took an uh, AIDS test, which you got to do when it's serious, and uh, which is a big relief. And now my doctor keeps calling, leaving messages on my machine saying it's urgent, but I don't call him back. I know he wants tickets to the show. <laughs> That's so rude. <laughs> now, who are you hanging out with on the show? You got all these cast members. You got any, uh, who are your pals out there? Um, well, you know, Adam Sandler, Chris Farley. Yeah. I share an office with Chris Farley. If you know, he's ah. great. He's that... Uh, Heavy set, um, yes. Member Gentlemen, of the yes. And we share an office, and I'm a, I write on the show too, and he doesn't write or read, so we. Uh, <laughs> so what happens is, I go into work, and uh, funny story, I go into work, and uh, like I have my little Levi jacket, I throw down, and then on the couch, and Farley comes in like five hours later, and uh, and I'm busy writing, and he's so fidgety because he has nothing to do, that he's always behind me going, Diva. David, David, turn around. And I go, Farley, if this is a uh, fat guy in little coat again, I'm <laughs> It's not, I promise. So I turn around, he's got my little Levi jacket on going, yee, fat guy in little coat. Like he's, you know, the robot and lost in space. And he go, I go, you said it was. And he goes, it's different. My arms are this way instead of this way. And then he's like, ha, ha, ha. Huh? I've never seen anybody play Farley like an 11 year old girl before. That's very he's, nice. Uh, but you're getting away, you're, you're doing the big movies now. You're making the break. What's this PCU thing? We have a clip of it, you know. You want us to show it? Uh, yeah. Yeah, what better. the hell? Yeah, let's this. All right, let's show wait, it. wait, wait, wait. Oh, I have to tell you what it is. Oh, please. I don't, it's I don't fat know if guy in little coat. It's very good. This is Fat Guy in Little Coat, the movie. This is uh, where it's PCU is like your basic boy meets girl, boy goes away to school, uh -huh. boy writes a movie like Animal House. <laughs> yeah, this is a, it's like, a, you know, a college movie like Animal House. I'm the bad guy. You? And, it, and this is me, I think, like meeting, trying to finagle one of the pledges. Oh, well set up. All right, let's Setting it up longer than the uh, movie actually is. <laughs> Look. America's greatest president. It's me, Rand, open up. America's greatest president. Damn it. Who is Ronald Reagan? A casual shoe for yachting. What are you trying to figure out, BD? Who could I be? What is a blooker? They killed Jesus Christ. Who are the Jews? Open up, sucko! <laughs> oh man! That's like the rudest part of the whole movie. Wow. 
That's that the is... rudest part. See, I'm like a little Nazi guy that everyone hates, and believe me, I get my own at the end. It's you... light summer fair. Do you think it's typecasting? Or, uh... No, it's not. Right, it's totally good. opposite of it. Stick around, though, because we got plenty more coming up. we got David Spade sticking around. Yeah. we got live music from Anthrax. And after the break, Mike Judge will be here. So stick around. <laughs> We're here with young David Spade. Uh, <coughs> tomorrow on the show, uh, actress Mary Stewart Masterson. You know her? Yeah, she hosted the show. She's a very nice girl. And uh, music from Cheryl Crow. So that'll be very lovely. Anthrax is coming up later. But right now, we have a, a good pal uh, of the show. Here he is, the man behind those legends who recently posed for Rolling Stone magazine, Beavis and Butthead creator, yeah. Mike Judge. <laughs> How are you, sir? I'm doing fine. Now, it's very nice to see you. Do most people realize that you're the big voice behind these guys, even though you're the creator? Um, well, they don't, no one recognizes me or anything, but, uh, yeah. Even after <laughs> doing, they, yeah. A couple times. Um, yeah, I get a lot of letters, actually. People don't know who does, who does the, the voice. Yeah. I mean, the first ones I, yeah, I, I, I do the voice and character design. And all that. Because I remember uh, we were flying back uh, in a plane and he was sitting behind me. And it's really unsettling to hear you, you tell like the stewardess would come by and go, do you want nuts? And then all of a sudden you'll hear back on the seat. <laughs> <laughs> she, she said no. nuts, you know, or something like that. And uh, yeah, I'm, it's just... I, I'm butthead all the time. I, I, I never get out of character. Do you think the relationship between Beavis and Butthead might blossom into something more meaningful? <laughs> uh, they're not gay, if that's what you're asking. Beavis and Butthead? No. Um, actually, the, uh, there was a, uh, uh, what is it, Planet H is a little yeah. publication in uh, L.A. I guess it's some kind of gay people's newsletter. Mm -hmm. And they had a cover with Butthead dressed up uh, kind of like the village people. Like <laughs> one of those uh, leather jock strap and Marlon uh -huh. Brando hat and shades. <laughs> Which and character mustache. was that in the village people? Uh, I don't know their the name. The construction <laughs> maker, probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what was Beavis? And Beavis was, Butthead was holding him in his arms. Beavis was dressed up like a girl, like a little. Ah. It's pretty cool. It's Butthead's the more romantic one, probably. Yeah, and I had a little interview with him that was like, Beavis and Butthead come out of the closet. <laughs> but uh, I didn't write the interview. Ah. So do, can people was, do that? Just put their pictures up on things without consulting? Well, they, they're not supposed to, but they do it all the time. Well, I'm looking forward to the new season. We actually have a <clears> clip from the new season. All right. That we're just going to show real quickly. This is a new season of Beavis and Butthead <laughs> coming up right here. <laughs> this one's okay. <laughs> okay, Beavis. You get down behind him, and I'll push him over you. <laughs> gonna be cool. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ready, dude? Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get it off me, buddy! Come on, help! You're touching its butt. Very nice. Now, uh, now are, we, are we worried not about any controversy? You know, kids pushing uh, over no. cows and some. Uh, Kids already push over cows. So. Oh, that's good. Has the controversy affected you in any way? You know, everything that's happened? Uh, yeah, I guess it's affected me a little. I mean, it, it's, it's basically, you know, it's, it's satire and the people who, you know, there's been all these articles written, all these horrible things said about the show and they describe it. I mean, you could describe the Three Stooges to someone who's never seen it in a way that it would sound awful. But right. if, if you, you know, I mean, it's just satire and, and there's been a lot of also, a lot of other newspaper writers who have never seen the show writing about it from what they've read from other newspaper people, and I mean, it's kind of died down. But right, yeah, it, it seems, seems like now people all, are taking it for what it is. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's, it's people who don't get satire and, and don't, you know, and so they don't think it's funny, and so they don't, and it scares them that a lot right. of people like it. And but, thinks it's evil. I'm looking forward to the movie though. Is that do you know is that going to be an animated movie or live action? 
Well, it's, we don't know yet. Uh, now I'm thinking I'd like it to be animated. Right. If they did live action, Spade here would make a lovely uh, yeah. Beavis, I think. Uh, yeah, he oh kind of is Beavis. Can Are you, you do a Beavis? <laughs> Can you do a Beavis? Uh, you know, I did one joke about how I thought Tom Arnold sounded like Beavis when he would talk to Roseanne. And whatever she'd say, he'd go, <laughs> good one, Rosie. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a good Beavis? Ah, we did it together. Yeah, they did Beavis good. together. That's Beavis exciting. And Beavis. Aww, Dueling that's Beavises. Sweet. All right, we got uh, we got Anthrax coming up. Beavis and Butthead, do they uh, give Anthrax a seal of approval? Yes. Very much so. All right, cool. Anthrax is cool. Anthrax is cool. All right, good. Stick around. We got Anthrax coming up after the break. Come on back. Thank you. We're here. We got Mike Judge. David Spade is off getting a snack. Uh, we got Anthrax coming up next. Uh, what do you think Mr. Anderson thinks of uh, Anthrax? Well, you know, back in my day, kids knew how to read music. Nowadays, these long-haired panty waist play a bunch of crap. <laughs> Sounds like noise to me. <laughs> he does the voice and the face. He does it all. The voice and the face. Nobody's seen this for a hundred years.